good morning dear students uh, taking our lecture further for trade unions today we'll be discussing trade union act 1926 so as we already have discussed that what uh, trade unions are uh, and uh, how trade union act was formed in 1926 uh, so this act basically summarizes all modalities pertaining to registration of trade union to decision of trade related disputes and this act sets guidelines for both the workers and the industrialists uh, the act deals uh, with the registration of trade unions their rights their liabilities and responsibilities as well as ensures that their funds are utilized properly and it gives a legal and corporate status to the registered trade union it also seeks to protect them from civil or criminal prosecution so that they could uh, carry on their legitimate activities for the benefit of working class so the act is applicable uh, not only to the union of workers but also to the association of employers and uh, it extends to whole of india so uh, when we talk about um, trade union act so uh, it deals with the registration of trade unions as i said and it also seeks to protect them from civil or criminal prosecution so that they could carry their legitimate activities for the benefit of working class and uh, as i said that it extends to whole of india and uh, basically uh, the act is administered by the ministry of labor through its industrial relation divisions and uh, so there are certain acts namely the societies registration act 1860 the cooperative societies act 1912 and the Co companies act 1956 which shall not apply to any registered trade union and that the registration of any such trade union under such act shall be void talking about uh, see that what main provisions of this act are the uh, when we talk about the see um provisions of the act according to trade union act 1926 um it means any combination with a temporary or permanent formed primarily for the purpose of regulating the regulations and relations between workmen and employers or between workmen and workmen or between employers and employers or for imposing restrictive conditions on the conduct of any trade or business and includes any federation of two or more trade unions and the basic provisions of the act are that it um, provides it is meant for the trade union and under this we have the registration of trade union the registration certificate how it is being generated and the how uh, how a registration of uh, trade union can get cancelled and annual, annual statutory returns and how these you uh, funds can be used and maintenance of accounts and Uh, what are the circumstances under which um, registrar may disqualify the registration or the applicants for, for uh, from getting trade union registered so the act provides for the registration of trade union uh, with the registrar of trade unions which is set up in different states like the office of registrar which is set by the government of national capital territory of delhi um, for registration of a trade union seven or more members as we have already discussed in our previous lecture that seven or more members of the union can submit their application in the prescribed form to the registrar of trade union and the application shall be accompanied by a copy of uh, rules of trade union and a statement giving particulars like name occupation address head office name of the office bearers and um, all that and uh, which is which is, which is to be submitted in the format which is given uh, under the trade union act 1926 so uh, the registered trade union which are workers and employers they are required to submit their um, annual statutory returns to the registrar regarding their membership general fund sources of income and items of expenditure and details of their assets and liabilities um, which in turn submits a consolidated return of their state in the prescribed performa to labor bureau ministry of labor and employment and the labor bureau on receiving the um, say uh, 
um, annual returns from different states or union territories. It consolidates the all India statistics and disseminates them through its publication, which is entitled as Trade Unions in India and other uh, regular publications. So the general funds of a trade registered trade union, they shall not be spent on any other objects than those specified in the act. Also, a registered trade union may constitute a separate fund from contributions separately lived for uh, made to that fund for the promotion of civic and potential interest of its members. As we said that they are trade unions are engaged in various social and say um, political and uh, they have other functions through which they promote social interest of the society of the nation and no member shall be compelled to contribute to such fund and a member who does not contribute to said, uh, said fund shall not be excluded from any benefit of the trade union or is placed in any respect either directly or indirectly under any disability or at any disadvantage which is compared with other members of the unions maybe by reason of his contribution to the said fund. Um, this act also uh, says that no office bearer or member of a registered trade union shall be liable to punishment under the Indian Penal Code with respect to any agreement which is ma been made with the, between the members for the purpose of furthering any such object of the trade union which is specified in the act. Unless the agreement is an agreement to commit an offence. So, uh, uh, no office bearer or member of the district trade union shall be liable to punishment. Then, uh, no suit or legal proceeding uh, shall be maintain, uh, maintainable in any civil court against any registered trade union or any office bearer or member thereof in respect to any, um, any act which is done in contemplation or furtherance of a trade dispute to which a member of the trade union is a party. <coughs> Sorry, on the ground only that such an act uh, induces some other person uh, to break a contract of employment or that it is an interference with the trade business or employment of some other person or with the right of some other person to dispose of his maybe his capital of his labor um, as he wills. Then the account of books of registered trade union and the list of members uh, shall be open to inspection by any office bearer or member of the trade union, uh, which is, uh, you know, uh, subject to inspection as and when uh, demanded. Then every office bearer or any other uh, person bound by the rules of the trade union shall be uh, punishable with the payment of fine. Uh, in case any default is made on the part of any registered trade union in giving any notice or sending any statement or other document as required or uh, under by provisions of any of the act um, and there could be any um, you know <clears throat> uh, willful disobedience if there is uh, any which is causes uh, to any false entry or any omission from the general statement or any form of a copy of rules or alteration of the rules which is sent to the registrar so it is an official um, a punishable offense and uh, any person who with intent to deceive gives to any member of a registered trade union or to any other person intending or applying to become a member of such trade union or any document purporting to the copy of rules of trade unions or any alteration to the same which he is you know which he or she knows uh, he has reason to believe is not correct mm, a copy of such rule or alterations um, as um, are for the time being in force or any person who with uh, the like intent gives a copy of any rules of an unregistered trade union or any person to the pretense that such rules are the rules of a tra registered trade union then uh, say uh, then, uh, talking about the say use of funds general funds of registration trade union shall not be spent on any other objects which are um, other than specified in the act uh, also registered trade unions may constitute a separate fund from contributions separately lived uh, or made to that fund for the promotion of uh, civic and political interest of its members uh, and then uh, 
there a person shall be disqualified for being chosen as uh, and for being a member of executive or any other office bearer of registration trade union if he has not attained the age of 18 years he has been convicted by the court in india for any offense involving uh, moral turpitude and sentenced to imprisonment unless a period of five years has elapsed since his release. So, under these uh, terms and conditions, a person can be disqualified uh, for being chosen as or being a member of executive or any other office bearer for registered trade union. So, uh, these were uh, the main provisions of this uh, act. And uh, registration of trade union we have already discussed and uh, how registrar can provide the certificate for registration and, 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 and what are the uh, say, terms and conditions under which the res uh, registrar can cancel the registration of a trade union. We have already discussed it in our previous lecture that if a uh, registrar is not satisfied under certain conditions uh, with the details which, uh, which have been furnished with the registrar uh, by the applicants, he has every right to cancel the registration, although he has to give sufficient reasons for uh, depicting his unwillingness or uh, non-registration of a trade union. Then uh, we have certain uh, rights and liabilities. There are certain rights and liabilities of a trade union. Basically, these rights and uh, liabilities are on the on account of the general funds. So the general funds of a trade union. They shall not be spent on any other objects on the um, following, namely the payment of salaries, allowances and expenses to office bearers of the trade union. That means they are not supposed to uh, spend those funds. Then the payment of expenses for the administration of trade union, including audit of the account of the general funds of the trade union. Uh, prosecution or defense of any legal proceeding to which trade union or any member thereof is a party when such prosecution or defense is undertaken for the purpose of securing or protecting any right of the trade union as such or any right arising out of the relations of any members with his employer or with person uh, whom the member employs. So under uh, this condition, uh, basically this is the, <clears throat> this becomes the, uh, say uh, right of the trade union that uh, they go they can go for the prosecution or defense of any legal proceeding and then the code of trade union uh, disputes on behalf of trade union or any member thereof compensation of members for laws uh, loss arising of trade disputes so uh, this is the right of trade union that uh, they can compensate the members uh, during the disputes, if there are any disputes which are arising out of any conflict or any dispute, so they can compensate the members uh, through, the, through the funds that have been generated by the trade union. That allowances to the members or their dependents on account of death, old age, sickness and accidents or unemployment of such members. Again, funds, uh, um, a trade union has the right to utilize the funds uh, for the allowance of the members for their dependents or, or their dependents. Then they can issue of or the undertaking of liability under policies of assurance of the life of members or under policies which are ensuring members against sickness, accident or unemployment. Then the provision of educational, social or religious benefits for members including payment of expenses of funeral or religious ceremonies for deceased members or for the dependent of members. Now these are not the rights, these are the liabilities of the trade union that they have to spend. Uh, fund for the let's say funeral for a payment of funeral expenses maybe uh, or the religious sermon, uh, ceremonies for the deceased members uh, for the trade union member if he if he is you know uh, if he dies or uh, if his dependents are not able to say bear the expenses so trade union has the liability to do that then <clears throat> upkeep of uh, <coughs> periodical <coughs> I'm so sorry <coughs> then um, it is a liability of the trade union to uh, maintain a periodical published mainly for the purpose of discussing questions affecting employers or 
<coughs> Workman has said. <coughs> then the um, trade union is also liable to pay the uh, to have the payment in furtherance of <coughs> any of the objects in which the general funds of the trade unions may be spent. Contribution to the cause intended to benefit workmen in general. But that expenditure has to be in respect of such contribution in the financial year. And it should not uh, at any time during that uh, year be in excess of one fourth of the combined total of the gross income, which has <clears throat> up to that time occurred to the general funds of the trade unions during the year and the balance of the credit of those funds at the commencement of the year. That means uh, trade union has the liability to <clears throat> make all the uh, say payments and contributions in that particular financial year and uh, those contribution or the payment should not exceed one fourth of the combined total of the gross income that means in one particular financial year trade union <clears throat> can spend one fourth of the combined of the total which uh, which it is uh, it has generated funds so out of those funds, only one fourth of the combined um, <clears throat> total of gross income can be spent on such payments. Then uh, subject to any conditions contained in the notification or any other notified by the appropriate government in the official gazette. That means if there are any changes in the rights and liabilities of the trade unions, <coughs> which is being... Um, <clears throat> which is being um, notified by the appropriate government, <clears throat> maybe through official gazette, that would be subjected to the trade union in terms of rights and liabilities. Then there are, uh, uh, there are certain recommendations um, uh, of the National Commission on Labor with respect to fraud union registration and recognition. <clears throat> that means uh, how... Uh, uh, if 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 a trade union is not furnishing all the details to the registrar or thereafter so it its registration may get cancelled and may be declared as fraud so uh, on this aspect there are certain recommendations by national commission on labor <clears throat> so uh, which says that every office bearer on or other person bound by the rules of the trade union shall be punishable with the payment of fine if um, when uh, when uh, this uh, trade union can be declared as a fraud, if default is made on the part of any registered trade union in giving any notice or sending any set statement or other document as required uh, under any provision of the act, that means if the details have not been furnished properly, <coughs> knowingly to with the registrar. And any person willfully makes or causes to be made any false entry. And if a person or the applicant is making any false entry in the application with the registrar, then uh, again in that case, it would be declared as a fraud. And any person who with the intent to deceive gives to any member of a registrar trade union or to any person intending or applying to become a member of such trade union, <clears throat> maybe any document purporting to the copy of the rules of the trade union or any other alteration of the same which he or she knows or he has reason to believe is not correct. That means if the registrar is um, believing that the details which have been furnished by the applicant is not correct, uh, then copy of such rules or alterations are for the time being in force or any person who likes to, um, with the like intent, gives a copy of any rules of an unregistered trade union to any person. That means a trade union has not been registered, but still they are circulating the <clears throat> copy of rules to the members of the um, um, which has not been registered with the uh, trade um, registrar, then again that may be considered as a fraud. Then any registered trade union may with the consent, consent of not less than two-thirds of the total member of its members subject to the provision of the act <clears throat> change its name 
for example if organ uh, if trade union wants to change the name then there has to be um, then there has to be <coughs> um, approval of two third of the total number of its members in the um, um, for in uh, in favor of change of the name so the change uh, in the name of a registered trade union shall not affect any of its rights or obligations or render def uh, defective <clears throat> any uh, legal proceeding by or against the union and any legal proceeding which might have been continued or commenced by or against it former name may be continued by its new name that means if uh, tomorrow if a trade union is <clears throat> changing its name um, then it does not mean that uh, uh, it will it will uh, it will altogether be a different entity no that means that uh, uh, obligations and the liabilities which it was having under one particular name will be continued with the new name as well so any two or more registered trade unions may become amalgamated together as one trade union with or without dissolution or division of funds of such trade union or any of them provided that the votes of at least one half of the members of each of such trade union entitled to vote are recorded and that at least 60% of the votes are in favor of the proposal. That means if two um, registered trade unions want to <clears throat> amalgamate, then there has to be, uh, <clears throat> then there has to be sanction of at least 60% of the votes which have to be in favor of the proposal. And such an amalgamation shall not prejudice any right of any such union or any right of creditor in, uh, or any of them. So these uh, Trade Union Act uh, 1926, it gives uh, certain powers to the trade union. It gives certain rights and liabilities uh, for the trade unions. And <clears throat> which and there are certain aspects that has not been covered under which are not there in the um, Trade Union Act 1926. And for those things, there are certain recommendations that have been given by the Second National Commission on Labor with respect to uh, fraud union registration and recognition, which was which is not covered there in under Trade Union Act 1926. So uh, this was all about uh, Trade Union Act 1926. Hope you have got some insight about the same. Thank you.